Joining me now is Avril Benoit, executive director of Doctors Without Borders. Avril, it's good to see you again. Uh, since we talked a few days ago, little progress. There's a president, uh, a promise that was made to President Biden that the Israelis will not block it. And now it's up to Egypt. We're told this could happen tomorrow. The trucks are waiting. What are your expectations? Well, we're uh, hopeful, as you have to be when you do this kind of work, uh, but we want to see action. We want to see uh, that uh, not only the trucks with uh, essential supplies, uh, we know we need water, we need fuel, we need medicine, we need food, all the things to keep people alive. Uh, we really want to see them cross, and uh, the numbers that I've seen uh, mentioned are not going to be nearly enough. So hopefully through this process, it demonstrates that there can be a trustworthy uh, mechanism of oversight, of inspection, of prioritization, um, so that uh, we can bring in the necessary aid for the people that have experienced this siege and the airstrikes, uh, which uh, continue even in the South, where people were told to seek refuge. What are you hearing from your personnel in Gaza? Uh how many have any gotten out? No one has gotten out. No one's gotten in. Supplies have not gotten in. Uh, we still have more than 300 colleagues uh, from Doctors Without Borders, from many nationalities, uh, also, of course, Palestinian. And uh, they are under very difficult conditions, so much so that we often lose contact with those who have chosen to flee with their families or stay at the bedside of hospitals that we have been supporting. And it's very dangerous work. If you choose to work in a hospital, uh, even the three that we have been supporting for many years uh, have been hit by strikes, have been damaged, and an ambulance also destroyed. So what we're seeing and, and, and experiencing in those hospitals hospitals, from what our staff tell us, is that the shortages are dire. People are screaming in pain. They lack water. Uh, infection control is impossible. It is virtually impossible to run a functioning hospital anymore under conditions like these. And do you know, have any idea how many patients there are right now? I couldn't tell you. We uh, are also hearing uh, lots of numbers coming from the health authorities there, uh, more than 9,000 injured people. The hospitals are overflowing. They're full and they lack medication. But the other thing they really lack, and I've mentioned this before and you know, is it, fuel to run the generators for the electricity necessary to keep powering all the machinery, uh, the incubators, uh, dialysis machine, fuel to run the generators mis machines. And so the great warning from our medical coordinator who just uh, updated us is that people will die in the coming hours uh, because of that lack of electricity uh, and the lack of the life-sustaining equipment. Um, th there's also this huge question of the water, which is making people sick. Um, so any number of things are complicating uh, the meager and insufficient efforts uh, that are being made by health professionals who find themselves here and there volunteering where they can, where it's functioning but always knowing that there are warnings, repeated warnings, that the Israeli officials are sending. The authorities say, this hospital, clear it out, evacuate immediately because there's a possibility of a strike. And sometimes that's not possible because people are not mobile. They're, it's impossible to, to for somebody who has mobility issues, elderly, a newborn, uh, to be able to evacuate as quickly as being as is being often requested. So we're, we're really worried that the situation is catastrophic uh, and it only gets worse hour by hour.